Hi and welcome, I'm John Lima, editor of The Economy, and this is Frontline. Today we travel to a small town called Harlow, about 25 minutes away from central London, to see one of the largest data center developments in the UK. And to talk us through that, I've got here JD, the CEO of KU Data, uh, to talk us through the development. JD, thanks a lot for talking to us. This site here is about a 200 million pound investment. It's a 35 acre site overall. Uh, what are you trying to achieve here? We're trying to build a new brand, a new data center brand, uh, um, with the first campus uh, here in London, and uh, hopefully uh, many more campuses in Europe. Uh, the media perception of this project is because it's based in the corridor between Cambridge and London. But is that going to be used much more for science and technology research and HPC sort of research? Uh, what is your co-location strategy for this site? Now we are a normal co-location company. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously with the corridor uh, we think we will have uh, quite a few uh, life science companies that, that, that will come and house their, their equipment here. But we're very much a, a wholesale data center company uh, with uh, with four buildings uh, that we're bringing into, into market. Okay, and then as I said, this is about 25 minutes away from central London. Is this proof that data centers today can still survive outside London? I think very much so. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, the history, uh, the first one that went to Slough, uh, everybody was also saying uh, it's crazy, what are they doing outside of the M25? Uh, I think we have the same metrics as Slough area. Uh, be it that we are far closer to uh, the city centre than Slough is. We're only 20 miles away from uh, Docklands. Uh, all the fibre routes are running here, from Docklands here, towards Europe, but also towards um, uh, Ireland. Um, so I think we have the power, we have the land, we have uh, the connectivity. Okay, and then talk about connectivity and power. Uh, you've recently brought in all the power, so that's nearly 44 megawatts of power, which is a lot, a lot of power. Correct. How is it going with customers? How are you getting along in that pace? We have uh, several discussions with uh, a number of customers ranging from 200 kilowatts up to, up to uh, a whole building. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, going, it's going well, uh, but we haven't signed a customer yet. And when are you preparing to launch? We are preparing to launch in December of this year. Uh, and our first building will be ready, one of the four buildings in total. Okay. And then from an investor perspective, you've recently raised 33 million pounds a few months ago, I think it was around February, March. Yeah. Uh, why are investors trying to get out of this project? What are they looking for? Well, first of all, our investors are in for the long haul. Um, we want to build a data center company, uh, starting with this campus here in, in, in Harlow. We've got 15 acres of owned land, we've got a 43 and a half uh, megawatt own uh, power substation uh, and we've built our first building uh, we have building consent for similar buildings like this cells uh, so in total for um, the idea is that we're starting in London and hopefully go to the rest of Europe uh, anytime soon okay. is there any schedule for that or is it no. just anytime soon okay um, and then this is the UK, Brexit happened, negotiations are going on. Do you, are you confident that the UK has a future for data centers post-Brexit? Um, absolutely. I think um, uh, UK is, is the biggest data center market in Europe. Um, it is today, and I think it will stay or remain the, the biggest uh, data center market. Um, the Brexit will have positives and negatives. I think it will bring new customers to the UK that weren't here yet. Uh, and certainly certain companies will, will move to, to, to mainland, uh, but they will always have to have space here in, in, in London. One of the positives for some international investment seems to be a weakened pound, so it's cheaper to invest in the UK. Yeah. Are you expecting a lot of investments for, on an industry basis, not just the uh, Are you expecting a huge investment wave? towards the UK in the next 10, 15, 18 months? I don't know about the huge investment wave, but certainly it makes England much more attractive to come in. Uh, England used to be quite expensive. It's now, it's almost equal to the Euro. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's far more interesting to bring your money into, into England right now. Okay. Now look at trends in the UK or elsewhere in Europe, just quickly finish as well. Um, what can we expect to happen in the next few months? Or where do you think your, most of your business is going to come from? based on the trends they use in the market? Trend, uh, I think a large portion will 
continue to come from the US and from Asia. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, most businesses will come from Asia and, and, and US. Okay, GD. GD. okay GD. thanks a lot for talking to me. Uh, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.